Hey, this is Matthew Lilly. Welcome to the Presence Pioneers podcast. Hey, welcome to today's episode. Thanks so much for joining us today. This podcast exists to equip present-centered communities to worship Jesus and pray night and day. So this is for worshipers, intercessors, leaders, lovers of Jesus who are part of Burn 24-7 furnaces or houses of prayer or praying churches. We want to help you. And so if you're a part of a community like that, uh, I hope this podcast encourages you and strengthens you in what you're doing. And it will probably help others that are with you in your community. So I'd encourage you to share this, like it, review it, comment, all those kinds of things that you can do to help this podcast go far and wide and ultimately strengthen the prayer movement. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe in your favorite podcast app or subscribe on YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube and stay connected with us. You can also go to our website at podcast.presencepioneers.org. You can subscribe via email, which is my personal favorite. You can also view previous episodes. You can get show notes and links. You can also make a donation to our ministry, which helps fund this podcast and keep this thing going and growing. So thank you so much for jumping in with us today. We're going to dive in. I'm going to share a message today that God gave me on a recent ministry trip. I was on a in the middle of worship before I was supposed to teach, and the Holy Spirit began revealing some things to me and connecting some dots in the scriptures and I was blown away because normally I'm very prepared and I've got notes and I've got a plan and this was a spontaneous message that was given to me uh, that God began to show me things in the scriptures and I was blown away and so I began to share that and so I'm going to do my best to uh, relay what God began to show to me uh, with the spontaneous message which uh, I called cast down your crowns and take up your ephod. Cast down your crowns and take up your ephod. So in 2 Samuel 6 is the story of David bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Israel. There was a previous episode where I talked about being undignified and living before the Lord. And so that's uh, where we're going to start, which is this story of David. He becomes king of Israel and he makes this radical decision to bring the presence of God which was manifested on the Ark of the Covenant at that time, and bring that into the capital city and make that central to the life of Israel and the life of God's people. And so David is prioritizing the presence of God. He's uh, the king, and before he's worrying about the economy and worrying about the armies and, and you know defense and all these things that kings should be worrying about, he's saying, first priority is actually the presence of God. Because if we get the presence of God into our city, then everything else is going to flow out of that. And so you know the story probably by now where they bring the ark in on a cart and uh, Uzzah touches the ark and he dies. And so they leave it at Obed-Edom's house. And then uh, they try again and David realizes the ark needs to be carried on the shoulders of the Levites. And he brings the ark in But there's this interesting uh, section in here. Let me find it real quick. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14, it says, David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. So you have to imagine this worship parade. The Ark of the Covenant's coming in. All of Israel's gathered. There's music. There's celebration. They're marching the Ark into Jerusalem, up Mount Zion, to take the center place of their entire nation. David, who's the king, puts on an ephod. And if you don't know what an ephod is, it's a priestly garment. And so the priests were of the tribe of Levi, but David is of the tribe of Judah. So David's really not supposed to be doing this, but he puts on this linen ephod and acts as a priest and starts to worship. It says David danced before the Lord, which means he was ministering to God as a priest with his worship wearing this linen ephod. So he's saying, I'm the king, but I'm going to take on this priestly function and this priestly role. And 
This speaks to us about a kingdom principle about how the priestly precedes the kingly. And David began to understand this. And I knew that he understood this. And I've looked at this chapter for many years. It's been uh, a passion of mine for a long time, this, this story of David to bring the presence of God into the city. But I never realized the significance of the ephod and David being king and how we see this same pattern uh, in multiple places throughout the scripture. So, of course, David, you know, he, he puts on this ephod. He acts as a priest, but his wife condemns him. And uh, he comes home and she sarcastically says in verse 20, how glorious was the king of Israel uncovering himself today in the eyes of made. What, what was he uncovering? Well, he was wearing an ephod, but he was taking off his kingly garments. He was laying his crown down and he was taking on this priestly garment. But David said, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all the house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord and I will become even more undignified than this. So David was saying, I'm going to lay down my crown, lay down my pride, lay down my rights so that I can do the better ministry, so that I can be before the Lord. He says, it was before the Lord who chose me. So David was acting as a priest. He's saying, I wasn't trying to be a king in this moment. I was trying to be a priest because I'm not going to be able to be a good king unless I learn to be a priest. And there's a principle there. There's a truth there that we need to learn that we cannot do the things God's called us to do until we get the first things first, until we get ministry to the Lord as the priority of our lives. When we learn to be priests before him and, and learn to be in his presence and learn to worship and pray, that's the priestly functions is, is worship and prayer. And so David was saying, the I'm going to first and foremost, I'm going to learn to be a priest and the overflow of that. It's me being a king, but I'm going to set aside my crown. I'm going to, I'm going to lay down my rights and, and put first things first. And it was for him personally, but because he was the king, that, that priority of the presence of God in his own life overflowed into the entire nation as God uh, continued to move him into places of authority. So that's the story of David, which I've covered in previous episodes. But now I want to flip over to Revelation chapter 4 and 5, and this is where the Apostle John gets a glimpse into heaven. And so Jesus said, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Revelation 4 and 5 gives us this beautiful glimpse into heaven, and we can see to some extent what God wants to do on the earth. Uh, in heaven, I like to call this God's man cave. You know, this is where God has his way. Uh, Jesus said, the will of God's done in heaven, let it come to earth. So God has his way in heaven. He's on a throne and he's surrounded by night and day worship and intercession, which we're going to see here. But I've never made this connection here. Look at Revelation 4, verse 8. It says, The four living creatures having six wings were full of eyes. Around and within, they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So that's day and night worship around the throne of God in heaven. It says, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him forever and ever and cast down their crowns before the throne, saying, you are worthy, Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So verse 4, you see there was there was a throne, and there were 24 thrones around the thrones, and there were these 24 elders, and they had crowns. So there's these royal beings, these elders, which many people think represent humanity, but the church, the believers, there's these 24 elders wearing crowns, and in, in heaven they're casting their crowns down. They're giving up that kingly place. Uh, just like David set down his royal place. He set down his crown. He took off his royal robes and he put on this ephod. You see the same thing in heaven. It's like David got a glimpse of what was happening in heaven. He said, I'm the king. But in heaven, every, every king bows before the king of kings. Every crown is cast down before, before God himself, the king of all. And then... By the time you see the elders in chapter 5, verse 8, it's a, it's a different picture. 
Jesus comes onto the scene, the root of David, the lion and the lamb. And in verse 8, it says, When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So the 24 elders go from sitting on a throne with crowns to now having harps and bowls. And so there's this transition from uh, the kingly into the priestly, where they were, chapter 4, functioning as kings. Chapter 5, they're functioning as priests. They've got harps, which are music, worship, and they've got bowls, which are full of incense, which it says are the prayers of the saints. This is intercession. So they've got prayer and worship. So there's been this shift from the kingly to the priestly. Just like David set down his crown and took on the ephod, it's like these, these 24 elders set down, cast down their crowns and took up harps and bowls. They took up this priestly ministry. They took up worship and prayer. They took up ministry to the Lord. And it's speaking to us of that same reality that first things must be first, that we've got to cast down our pride, cast down thinking we know how to do it, Figuring, you know, thinking we've got all the solutions and we've got to humbly depend on God. But David, David understood this, that we need the presence of God. We need intimacy with him. We're dependent on him. Uh, everything overflows out of our relationship with God. All of our authority actually comes from intimacy. Jesus said in John 15, he said to abide in the vine, that he's the vine and we're the branches, that if we abide in him, with have relationship with him, a life of communion with him, it says we will bear much fruit. Jesus said, you'll bear much fruit if you abide in me. But he said, apart from me, you can do nothing, nothing. Jesus is, is strong in his statement of saying, that everything fruitful, everything that's going to benefit the kingdom, everything that's going to have lasting impact is an overflow of intimacy with me. And if it's not rooted in intimacy and communion and love with me, then it's actually nothing in the eyes of God. Even though we try to do all these things in our own effort and in, in our flesh and in our, in our soul and with all of our best attempts to come up with things and do things for God, he's saying all of you trying to do those things is actually nothing if it's not an overflow of intimacy with me. And that's what it's speaking to us. That's what David's speaking to us. That's what Revelation 4 and 5 are speaking to us is that there's a way in which things happen in the kingdom of God. There is a priority. There is a way in which God has set up his kingdom to be governed where ministry to him through worship and prayer, this priestly ministry is what uh, creates an environment where everything uh, that God wants to do happens, <laughs> where his will is done and his kingdom comes. So as we replicate heaven on earth, we see the kingdom of God expand in the earth. This is profound. There's one other example of this that I want to highlight, and it's Jesus himself. Because Jesus is king of heaven and earth, creator of the world, high lifted up. He's in heaven with the Father, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, eternal one. Humanity is broken. Jesus himself cast down his crown and humbled himself and became a priest. Philippians 2 says, let this mind, this is verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Jesus cast down his crown and took up his ephod. He became a priest for us. He made a way for us. He had every right to not come. He had no obligation to come, but in love and humility, he said, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to set my crown down. I'm going to set down uh, my right to be distant, and I'm going to come and be a priest and make a way for humanity to come back to me, to reconcile the earth, to, uh, to save humanity. Isn't that amazing? Hebrews 3 says, 
uh, that Jesus is the apostle and the high priest of our confession. In chapter 4 of Hebrews, verse 14, it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain help, mercy and grace to help in our time of need. Jesus became our high priest. He took on the ephod. He cast down his crown and he came. What does a priest do? A priest takes people to God and takes God to people. The priests are intercessors. They're mediators between uh, the earthly and the heavenly. So they stand in the gap. A priest would, uh, in, in the old covenant, a priest would offer sacrifices to God on behalf of the people and then would be in the presence of God and would relay messages, prophetic words, uh, and the, the truth of the law to the people of God. So there were these mediators. And uh, Jesus became our ultimate mediator, our high priest. Now every, every person who puts their faith in him can have access to God. Jesus stood in the gap and he uh, brought himself to earth, brought God to earth, and, brought, and, and brings us to the Father. It says that he ever lives to make intercession for us. He is our ultimate high priest. And Jesus himself set an example for us that we would say, let's lay down our pride. Let's humble ourselves and let's become priests unto God. Let's stand in the gap between heaven and earth and let's take people to God and let's take God to people and let's enter into that priestly ministry of worship and prayer. Let's enter into that intimate place with Jesus that we're with him where he is that, we're, that we were with him wearing that linen ephod of priestly calling of that uh, place before God, that place with Jesus close to his heart where we're abiding with him, we're communing with him and let the overflow of all of that uh, be God's will and his desire to be done into the earth because our, our authority flows out of intimacy. So if we're with Jesus and we have authority to, be, to move and to speak, and to act on his his behalf because we've been with him we've heard his word we've we've heard his voice we've been filled with the spirit we've been sent by him so i want to invite you to just embrace this priestly calling and i want to invite you to put first things first jesus uh was asked what's the greatest commandment he said the first and greatest commandment is to love god with all your heart soul mind and strength and the second is to love your neighbor as yourself so I pray that I pray today that all of us would put first things first, that that above all else, we would love God and realize we can't love others if we don't first love him, that before we can go change the world, that we've got to minister to God before we can minister to others, uh, that there's a there's a way, there's an order in which God's inviting us to enter into to be a royal priesthood, but knowing that the royal comes out of the priestly. And uh, the kingly flows out of that worship and prayer and that God's kingdom uh, comes and is advanced in the in governed in the context of day and night worship and prayer. So, God, I, I pray for every person that hears this podcast, draw their heart to you, draw them to the secret place, draw them to your presence, draw them to intimacy, draw them to the word of God, that they would learn that they are priests. God, release revelation to hearts. Beyond what my little words can say, release revelation to hearts that people would understand what it means to love you, to minister to you, and be priests before you so that your kingdom can come and your will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.